Hello, welcome to another video. Thank you all for 250 subscribers. This is a lot of you guys. I know I haven't been uploading much lately. Um, I had a test week from school and we're also busy renovating the house. As you can see, I'm sitting in the living room instead of in, at my usual place upstairs. Um, but I finally have some time to shoot another video. It's really cool. Uh, Cyril, in the new nightly version of Cyril, there's a new deconvolution, uh, an improved deconvolution, I must say, with a lot more features. What is deconvolution, you might ask? Uh, deconvolution attempts to, is an algorithm that attempts to uh, remove the blur that might be caused by your optics or by your, um, with the atmosphere any any other thing that might cause a small blur um, so let's have a look at the deconvolution it's at the usual place here deconvolution in image processing and here we can see we get the PSF generation and the non-blind deconvolution for now I'm going to hide the non-blind deconvolution and we're just gonna have a look at the PSF generation what is a PSF? PSF is the point spread function um, PSF is an attempt uh, to reconstruct the blur that is caused, that, 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 that is recorded. So here you can see a star that's quite bloated. Um, uh, it, it consists of, very, uh, of quite a few pixels, but in theory it should just be one. Because of course it, 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 the stars are so far away that we can only see them as a single pixel. But they aren't. So what the PSF does is it tries to reconstruct it so to, to try and show the, pro, the deconvolution method what the stars should, are looking like and what they should be looking like so we have a few options on how we are going to uh, create a PSF the standard one is the blind deconvolution it's by far the easiest you just click G generate PSF and you're done basically um, we have PSF from stars uh, PSF from stars is a little bit more complicated but if blind deconvolution fails it is a great backup to have a manual PSF um, yeah maybe to tweak your, your, your current PSF a little bit but I, I wouldn't touch it I, it's, it's fine just working with these two um, also keep this one at the end I, I don't think it's worth trying the other one uh, it should work fine uh, first I want to show you what the PSF from stars, uh, how you can create it if the blind deconvolution fails. Um, we go into, we hit close, so we're going to go out of the deconvolution and we're first going to select the stars manually. Or we'll let it select some stars and we'll adjust it manually. So, you're going to go into the three, three bars here, then go into image information. And then here it is, says dynamic point spread function. So we're going to click that one and it's going to show up this little menu. Then we can click the three stars here. This will automatically detect the stars in the image. As you can see, the, it has successfully detected most of them, uh, excluding some of the smaller ones, which is fine. doesn't really matter. But what does matter is that it has also selected some HA regions, um, in my case then. This one, uh, for example, isn't a real star, but it's like a cluster of, of, of uh, hydrogen alpha. Um, so I'm going to exclude this one. So what I'm going to do is click it. Now it has found it in the list. And we can just click the minus button down here. And there it is. Then we can go over all of them, all of the HA regions it has uh, selected. It has these two. And to make sure, I'm also going to deselect this one. And here is the final one. So, let's see, yeah, I think now it has only selected stars. So we can close this one, go back into deconvolution, PSF from stars, generate PSF. And there it is, our PSF. Now, this is quite a lot of steps since it's a little bit of work, so. For now, for what I would suggest is just use a blind deconvolution uh, as a start. It's way easier. You just click generate PSF. 
it'll take a while, maybe like a minute, maybe 30 seconds, something. And you'll have a perfectly adequate PSF. As you can see, it has finished. Um, and it's looking basically the exact same uh, without all of the work that we just did. Um, one thing I should mention, we have a few options here, the PSF size and the, the lambda or the lambda. Um, PSF size, I haven't found a need to change this one. Uh, and lambda, if you have very noisy, noisy data, like maybe 5 minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. It can be worth decreasing this value, so it isn't select using the noise for the PSF generation. Then we have some expert settings. I maybe if you're having trouble go through these. Um, I haven't found very much need for it as the PSF is looking perfectly adequate um, for the deconvolution. Now, with the PSF generated, we can go into the non-blind deconvolution tab. Here we have a few more settings, I must say, um, and I'll go over them uh, individually. Um, first of all, we have here the method for deconvolution. Uh, Richardson Lucy is the standard one. It's also, I think, the most popular. It's also the one used in PixInsight, and I've used it in a different program as well. Um, Wienerfield, I don't know it. I don't know the split Bregman method i would just suggest richardson lucy um, if you're curious about the other two though you can hover over it and after like a second or something it's going to show all the the information all the text about it that you might need then we have the alpha <coughs> this is a regularization parameter um, you can play around with it uh, to be honest, I haven't really seen much difference in using a very high and low value. Maybe that... It's very hard to tell, but I think it might sharpen it a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on the value you use. Um, but I'm very curious about what it really does. Uh, and if you do know, please let me know in the comments. Uh, iterations, how often the deconvolution method will run through the, the deconvolution. Basically, the more you do, the longer it's going to take, um, and the more accurate it will be. Though it should be said, if you set this to a very high value, it is more prone to error, or to and thus it might produce some artifacts, um, especially within the noise and stuff. Talking about the noise, if you are finding that deconvolution is increasing the noise, and not really sharpening it, but very much just increasing the noise then you can set a stopping criterion um, by applying a stopping criterion uh, the deconvolution will only sharpen the larger regions and will exclude the no and try to exclude the noise from the deconvolution gradient descent is the method uh, for making sure that there are no black borders around the star uh, that are uh, that might become around the stars um, it is very similar to the, the setting in, in PixInsight that people use uh, to tweak their deconvolution. The step size, um, if you're finding still that the standard settings, that the stars are maybe a little bit, have a dark edge or are, have a brighter edge, you can play around with this setting by lowering or hiring the value. Uh, regularization. I would suggest just keeping it the standard value, um, though you might find that um, the sharp it will try and sharpen it more basically. But if you find that it's too sharp, you can set this to uh, no regularization if you want to. But I would just suggest keeping it a total variation for now. As you can tell by the video already. Um, I think the, the developers of Serial really chose amazing values, as standard values, as far as I have found, um, and not much tweaking is necessary, um, really, but if you do need to tweak it, 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 it's great you have the options now, and before you ha didn't have the, these options, it might fail one or twice uh, on an image, but now it is more, more, you, more, you have more variation on the images you can use the deconvolution on. 
So, now I'm gonna let it run. Uh, we have the PSF, I'm just gonna run the non-blind deconvolution. Um, oh yeah, one thing, one thing I forgot to mention about PSF. After you've generated a PSF, it will automatically go to previous PSF, so you're not creating a PSF every single time you run through the deconvolution. Um, because this is just way faster. I'll now let it run for once, and after that I'll see you again and we'll compare the results before and after the deconvolution. As you can see it has finished, um, let's have a look. We can close out of this one. Um, let's first go to a star here. And as you can see, uh, before and after, before, after, before, after, it is really just tightening up the star by quite a large margin. Um, it's really just sharpening it up. And if we go into the details here, because the, so this is a row of HA regions, if we go back and forth, I don't know if it's coming through on YouTube, but uh, on my screen it's definitely sharpening it up a little bit. It's just, just a little bit nicer, it just improves the image a little bit. Thank you for watching, um, I hope you found this video helpful. Clear skies.